everyone, uh, to the Trinity Methodist Church family and others who are watching this video, I welcome you to this very important message that I have for you about the vaccination rollout. This is our sixth Love in the Time of Corona video. And we're actually filming this video here at the vaccination site in Barario. And there are about 200 people behind me queuing up to be vaccinated, which is a very, very good sign. And that's the message of this video, is to encourage you to get vaccinated. Uh, vaccines have come as a real uh, rescue for us in this pandemic. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of people have not taken to getting vaccinated. I don't think the over 60s, who should have all been vaccinated by now, I don't think the number has even reached one quarter yet, 25% of people over 60 being vaccinated. Over 50s can now be vaccinated, and in fact there are some over 50s, although it's before the 15th of July, uh, being vaccinated behind me. And, and we're hoping that the vaccine rollout is going to improve. Now, a lot of people have a lot of hesitations about getting vaccinated, and that's what this video is going to deal with, particularly from a faith perspective, a Christian perspective. What, can, what, what are some of the concerns that have been raised? And I want to speak into those concerns, and I hope I'm going to be helpful to you. We certainly acknowledge there's a lot of fear in the air, and there's a lot of worry, and that has been fed into, and that has fed into the whole uh, matter of getting vaccinated and I'm really hoping to just speak into that and be helpful to you so please listen there's quite a lot to say but I, I do believe this is all going to be really helpful for you so we've named all of these videos love in the time of corona and and it, during this journey we've just needed to keep reminding ourselves that love must be our main motivation, love must be the spirit with which we journey through this uh, pandemic rather than fear. And those two often are sitting on two opposite sides of a spectrum and, and we are called and enabled by the spirit to be on the side of, of love rather than of fear. A very a uh, beautiful, helpful passage of scripture that has been important for us throughout the, the uh, pandemic has been uh, 1 John chapter 4. And I just want to read some of the verses to you from between verses 7 to 21. Just hear about the importance of love and how it contrasts with fear. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of, from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because He first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. So, as I take us into this video, the first place I want to stop at is to understand that vaccines are a good partnership with our God-given immune system. Now, our bodies have an amazing defense mechanism against disease. It is our immune system. But something like the COVID virus has been unknown to our systems, and therefore our bodies do not have a defense mechanism against it. What a vaccine does is imitates the virus. It doesn't give you the virus. It imitates the virus so that your body mounts an attack on it and then sets up a whole lot of defending cells uh, and keeps them in reserve so that if you are ever uh, infected with COVID, those defending cells are there waiting and are ready to attack the COVID virus. So it's, it's really an amazing partnership really. A vaccine is a partnership with what God has given us, our defense mechanism against disease. Um, if you can perhaps imagine a sports team who 
uh, practices a defense against a certain attack and they practice it and they practice it and they practice it many times so that if in the match they are attacked on in that particular way they they are ready uh, for that attack and they are able to successfully defend themselves that's really what a vaccine is doing is is giving you uh, that kind of uh, defense preparation uh, so it's something really, really special. So we should be grateful to God for our immune systems and the way in which they defend us and how vaccines can help us in that. I want to talk now about the risks. What about the risks of getting the vaccine? That's something very important, of course. Now, when one's thinking about the risks, uh, people are, are worried, for example, um, about how quickly the vaccines were developed. But of course one need, does need to remind ourselves that vaccine technology is not new technology. It's something that the world has been doing for many, many, many decades. And, uh, and even uh, developing vaccines in a very short space of time is also not new for the world. The flu vaccine, for example, is developed on an annual basis. Uh, so if you get a 2021 flu jab, it's based on the viruses that were prominent in the world in 2020. So there's a quick turnaround there, just as there has been a quick development of the COVID vaccine. The fact that it was quick doesn't necessarily increase the risks. Now, of course, um, uh, pharmaceutical companies do have a profit incentive to develop vaccines. And that is why the way in which the world deals with vaccines is to say that the pharmaceutical company is not, are not the ones who may give the final word on whether their vaccine is safe or not. There are other organizations that do that. The World Health Organization, the FDA, South Africa's own uh, organization, the South African Health Products Research Council. Those are all the bodies that will decide whether a vaccine is safe or not. And in testing the vaccine, they will test um, that does the, any risks, and of course there are always some small risks in a vaccine, but do the benefits of fighting the illness far outweigh the risks? Um, and so the vaccines that we are getting have been tested and retested and have passed all of the uh, tests and been pronounced uh, as enormously beneficial. And so one need not then therefore worry about the risks. Just in terms of the risks, let me just very quickly say, because I got permission from the matron here to do this video, and she said, I must say that if you are taking any blood thinning medication, any certain medications, then don't come to the Barario Rec Center to be vaccinated. Rather, you must go to a hospital to be vaccinated. So anybody who has a risk that they might have an anaphylactic reaction or some reaction to the vaccine shouldn't come here um, because they don't have first aiders and so on. But in fact, um, I'll tell a bit later about when we got vaccinated uh, at, a, at a big hospital, uh, they had had no negative reactions and they had already done many, many thousands of uh, the vaccine. So, so it is safe. Of course, if you've had COVID recently, you must wait a little bit before taking the vaccine. Just consult the doctor for uh, guidance in that. Now I want to talk about something that's very close to Christian's hearts. What about God's protection? So Christians will say, shouldn't I be trusting God for protection against the virus? Um, should, am I not betraying my trust in God by getting vaccinated? Am I trusting something that's made by humans um, rather than trusting in God? Now, I saw, for example, recently on Facebook, somebody who had uh, on their profile picture a statement against vaccination and they said, protected by Psalm 91. Now, uh, that sums up where many Christians are. I actually want us to have a look at Psalm 91 because it is a very beautiful psalm and it does talk in incredibly strong ways about God's protection. So just listen to these words uh, of Psalm 91. You who live in the shadow of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler 
and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. So powerful words of protection and, and beautiful words and words that we've often turned to. Should those words not say to us, trust God, God even mentions the pestilence and God's going to protect us from the pestilence. But the problem with this uh, proposal of trusting only in God and not in a vaccine is that it makes the matter of protection into an either or, you know, Either I trust God or I trust the vaccine. Why should we do that? How is that sensible to say, to make this an either or matter? In proposing to you to have the vaccine, I'm not saying stop trusting God. I'm not saying make this an either or matter. Stop trusting God, just trust the vaccine. No, not at all. I think a good way to think about this would be, for example, in cars. We have safety belts and we have airbags. Um, you could be someone that says, listen, when I drive, I trust God. I don't wear a safety belt and I don't bother with getting a car with airbags. You know, I had a friend um, who was a Methodist minister who in the late 90s had a terrible accident um, on a quiet road outside uh, Stellenbosch. Um, him and his wife were driving and they had a head-on collision and both him and his wife were nearly killed. They had young children. Um, now their car was a car that did not have airbags. At that stage uh, many cars did not have airbags, especially cars developed in the early 90s. And I just was so, they had, obviously they had their safety belts on. Um, they spent months in hospital but I was so frustrated um, that, that only the very rich people's cars at that time had airbags. Why could not somebody with a Corolla have an airbag? And now, of course, cars do have airbags, um, and we are glad for it because of the added protection it gives us. Here was a, uh, you know, and it's just a small example, many examples could be listed of a person who trusted God, who had an accident, who would have been protected from injury had there been an airbag. So that's the, really the way to think about um, protection, is that here is something that uh, God has been at work in, in the developing of vaccines, and just as God is at work with safety belts and airbags, so God has been at work in the developing of a vaccine, and that gives us protection, and we are receiving a protection that God is offering us. Now I want to talk about something that really encourages you to get the vaccine and it's about love. Remember this is love in the time of Corona and I'm wanting to talk about love for those who are the most vulnerable. If you, uh, let's say for example, are over 60 and should have had a vaccine already but haven't had a vaccine, um, I would want to say to you if you had had a vaccine and you caught COVID then you would probably not get very sick and you would not need hospitalization. That means that now during this third wave, a hospital bed would be available to those who are under 60, who have caught COVID and need that hospital bed. But if you had not had the vaccine, 
uh, and got sick and needed the hospital bed, then you would be taking up a place that uh, a person who hasn't had the privilege of having the vaccine um, now needs the hospital bed for. So it's really your love for those who are more vulnerable for you. Also, you know, just as a doctor um, deals with an individual in healthcare, so healthcare officials deal with communities. And, and, and so healthcare officials need to know that uh, a number of people, a, a large proportion of people are protected by the vaccine. So that those in the community who have uh, certain illnesses uh, or frailties, the very young and certain other kinds of conditions that prevent them from being able to get the vaccine, that they are protected because so many people around them have got the vaccine. It's called umbrella protection. Um, and so you are part of umbrella protection for the vulnerable by getting the vaccine. Also, I want to uh, say to you that uh, if there is a large number of people who have not been vaccinated, then that creates a whole community within which the virus can mutate and develop further and continue to threaten society. But if large numbers of people have been vaccinated, it reduces the pool within which the, in, within which the, the, the virus can develop further. And so in all of these ways, we are loving the vulnerable through getting vaccinated. And I really encourage you for that. Further now on love, I want to talk to you about getting vaccinated because it is your support of people's livelihoods. Uh, whilst there are a small number of the population who are vaccinated, that makes us vulnerable to the waves of COVID and therefore increases the need or continues the need for lockdowns. If we had uh, a large proportion uh, of the population vaccinated, then the need for strict lockdowns would be hugely reduced and therefore people would not have their livelihoods threatened so much. Let me talk now about the ethical concerns. Uh, a number of people have raised ethical concerns in the development of the vaccine, particularly as it relates to the potential for uh, the tissue from fetus uh, that could have been used in the development of the vaccine. Now, uh, vaccines to be developed do need uh, tissue on which to develop, um, and sometimes eggs are used, uh, um, chicken eggs. Um, but in this case, human tissue was needed for the development of the COVID vaccine. And so the tissue, because they couldn't use adult tissue uh, because of various complications, the tissue that was used was what is called immortalized cells that were developed from fetus tissue of aborted fetuses in the 1960s and 1970s. There were several fetuses that were used. Now those fetuses are not used anymore. None of that tissue is used anymore. Uh, immortalized cells were developed then and those that line, that descended line of immortalized cells are what are continue to be used now. So you, you can't actually say that a fetus was used in the development of this uh, vaccine. Of course, we don't know the conditions of the uh, aborted fetus, fetuses um, at, the, at, the, at the time then. Um, some of them may well have been miscarriages. Um, no n continuing uh, abortions are, are, are used or fetus tissue in any way in the development of uh, vaccines. So it's not as if these things are encouraged in order to uh, have uh, tissue for the development of vaccines. Um, it's still just uh, the result of the technology from the 1960s and 1970s. So a Christian who is strongly pro-life uh, need not have concerns 
Uh, yes, of course, as I say, we didn't know the conditions uh, under which uh, the abortions took place, if they were abortions. Um, and, and, uh, but, but the, the life-giving, in the sense of pro-life, uh, benefit of the technology um, that is available to us because of what was done then is hugely beneficial and important. So all pro-life organizations um, and, and faith-based pro-life organizations are encouraging people to, to get vaccinated and are not concerned about this aspect of, of the ethics. The question I want to address now is this, does the COVID-19 vaccine have the mark of the beast? Uh, does getting vaccinated uh, mean that you have received the mark of the beast? Now, the mark of the beast is something that comes in Revelations chapter 13 verse 16 and it refers to Roman emperors at that time who demanded worship and allegiance and that you actually abandon your faith and pledge allegiance to them and their word was supreme and you received a mark as a sign that you had done that. Now that's what the mark of the beast is about and nothing like that is being asked of you uh, in this. So, so please don't make that a, a reason to not get vaccinated. The last aspect that I think is helpful just to reflect on, and it relates to the vaccination question, but it relates to a number of other things for Christians, is the whole relationship between the Christian faith and science. Uh, there is a tension there for a lot of Christians. Uh, science uh, and what science develops um, is viewed with great suspicion and, and uh, Christians look down on science and, and there's, a, there's a lot of tension between a lot of Christians and, and, and the whole realm of science. Now, of course you will not find a Christian who decides they want to go to a dentist who uh, de practices 17th century dentistry. Um, and there's no Christian who would, if they were going to have an operation, not want an anesthetic uh, before they have that operation. So there's all of these ways in which we use 21st century science. Um, certainly if you go to a dentist, you want that dentist to be cutting edge as much as possible with uh, their uh, capacity for caring for you. So, so we, we are very reliant on that. Um, yet in other instances we want to say, well, here's a vaccine uh, developed by science and I don't trust it. Um, remember the sermon series we had around drawing your picture of God and our sermon that we shared with you, the whole idea um, and the reality of the cosmic Christ. How Christ is at work in the cosmos. And Christ is not just trapped within a religion, but is at work in the whole of society. And that all progress, that is genuine progress for the good of humanity, is actually Christ at work. Um, uh, so Christ is at work in science. And a lot of things that scientists learn about nature, they are learning essentially about Christ because all of creation has come into being through Christ. So a a whole suspicion of what scientists develop is not really appropriate to uh, the grand vision of reality that Christians have and how God is at work uh, throughout the world, even amongst people who aren't necessarily people of faith. But if they're doing their job well to the best of the ability to serve the common good, Christ is at work there and the marvels of nature uh, which is what scientists are dealing with, is of course the marvels of God's creation. So we don't need to have an either-or sense. Um, and and I, I, I want to just share that with you. So the last thing I'm wanting to say to you is uh, roll up your sleeves and uh, get vaccinated, please. Uh, Angela and I were very privileged. Uh, we were able to be vaccinated on the first day of the over 50-year-olds. Uh, there's a whole story behind that which I won't uh, share with you now, 
but uh, a window of opportunity happened and uh, we were vaccinated. Uh, the other thing I'd like to say to you is uh, roll up your sleeves and encourage others. Uh, get involved with your community and say to them, please uh, get vaccinated. Please share this video with them. I, I really believe uh, that this video can help a lot of Christians, people of faith in this whole question. It is a, a serious pandemic we're living with. People have concerns and out of love for you and taking those concerns seriously, we've shared this video with you today. God bless you.